How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel, here to talk about another book I just finished. I've been trying to get through all of uh, Philippe Drier's work. It's being put out by Titan Comics, and I just read Urigal and Erm the Mad. I apologize if any of my pronunciations in this video are incorrect. I have no idea. and It's kind of difficult to find some of these things uh, pronounced online, so... I'm gonna start just by talking a little bit about Drier and about this series of books. Um, which, by the way, are still in print and are available for, it looks like, 35 US. Um, I've been trying to collect everything that Titan's putting out by Drie, so right now I think that's about seven to eight volumes. This being the third. Um, I'm reading them chronologically, so this one I want to talk about specifically because I think it's a standout. The two before this were The Six Voyages of Lone Sloan and then Lone Sloan Delirium. And while Drie's art is beautiful in both those books, I think the narrative is a little bit messy and um, it's more of an art book for me, to be honest, but this one actually had some really cool stylistic choices and inspirations, which definitely were H.P. Lovecraft, um, Elric of Melnebony's in there a lot, a little bit of like Conan, Sword and Sorcery, Elric type stuff. I really love that stuff, so it's easy for me to pick this as my favorite, but Let's get flipping through it real quick. There is, as with apparently every book I review, nudity in this. I'm trying not to show that, just to get YouTube off my back. Um, so it's by Philippe Drier and I believe Michel DeMuth? I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, he must have assisted with the writing, I would wager. Um, so... A lot of vertical panels that I'm gonna have a hard time showing you so this is actually goes vertically um, but if I turn it you are out of frame so a bit of an issue there but I'm gonna try and work around that there's a perfect spread that's horizontal for you one thing I love about Philippe Drier is that his sense of scale is just magnificent and his kind of working in the background all the time where you'll have just layers and layers of background and foreground and you can't even really tell where the camera is for a good few seconds while you're looking at it. Um, another another vertical spread. Books, he loves vertical spreads. He also loves like um, really insane panel borders. Like you don't need to do all that to make it some word balloons but you you did um and i love that it just lets your eyes linger on it so much longer also sense of scale right there again and these chapter breaks are really interesting too he does a lot of these where it's mostly black and white and then he'll have either a figure or a shape just covered in color but the black and white is so finely detailed whole page of text. Um, I should mention this was published in I think 72 originally. Um, so if you wanted to reference, he was most definitely, there's more of that bordering. So just the border of the art is more detailed than a lot of art in general you'll find in comics and uh, I really think that's something special. It must have taken him a long time to get all this done. I'm not going to talk about the story a ton. Um, it is good, and I did uh, I did appreciate it, but it's not uh, what I would say is integral to the story. I love some of this stuff too, right here. It's almost like wow, just like establishing shots, really, right now, because the the narrative is giving you background to the story during this time, and then you're just getting establishing shots of various uh, landscapes. Here's another one of those chapter breaks I was talking about. And inside you can see the color. I love his use of ink as well. I really, He does this multiple times with this sky. It almost have spider-like legs coming out. Looking like the, the void is kind of seeping into the sky. 
very evil looking. I love his use of ink. As much as I love his lines, I love uh, when he spots blacks. I think it's really effective. Uh, I'll try and showcase one or two. It was a little easier in the other editions because he was a little less detailed and a little bit had a little bit bolder um, outlines and things. And actually, I was I wanted to mention how he looks like Kirby, like Jack Kirby in some some of his character work. But this book is probably the least Kirby, so I can't really show you that. But he was most definitely influenced by Kirby, and Kirby in turn was influenced by him. If you've seen any of the stuff from like Mr. Miracle or Hunger Dogs or anything like that, you could see some of this kind of outline stuff. Kirby adopts a little bit of that in those in those stories. And something I think that this has taught me these chapter breaks is that Drier is not only his lines are perfect and immensely richly detailed, but his colors. I think stand out a ton to me. Um, I'm gonna attempt to find my favorite chapter break just to try and show you. See if I can find it. This is my favorite. I love the perfectly imperfect sphere of paint. I love that he kind of hashes out all these lines, taking probably hours and hours to get all these lines on the page. But then sometimes he will just fling paint. At the end of this story, um, there is, here's some spatter. He's literally just spattering his brush across and it lands in word balloons. It gets messy. Like there's Ink, or there's paint in that world, word balloon there. Because this was the 70s. I mean, this isn't... I, I would assume these aren't digitally added word balloons. These are on the page, and he sprays them with paint, and I love that. Um, there's a couple more examples of it. You can see even there. Like, he has a really great effect when he works with moons, planets, and things like that. This chapter break almost looked like alien Lovecraftian letters. These come up a few times that I think are super interesting. There we go. He's spattering paint everywhere and he just covered this word balloon in paint. You can see it kind of running down here. So he'll take all the time in the world on his lines and then he'll sit there and just fling paint at the page, which I think is amazing. And it works beautifully, I mean, I don't know a lot of people that could do that, but I think if there's anything to be taken from this uh, kind of art in the 70s is that his coloring was way ahead of its time. I mean, his line work's incredible, but his coloring, I think, is extremely ahead of its time, especially in today's world where it's all digital. There's another one of those spheres. It's just gorgeous. And then a landscape that is ridiculous and I believe we open the next page in that same landscape with those spider like inky sky I also want to point out before I finish um, I love the cover I love how it's a solid just red to show a cape or a cowl or anything like that I also love, I kind of mentioned it during the Mobius video, he has these white lines he starts using on the cover here. And I'm just always a fan of that. I'm always a fan of that contrasting white line. You have to be very confident as an artist to do something like this, to just fill the majority of the figure with red and then an outline. And it works super well, in my opinion. So uh, I just wanted to spotlight Drier and his, his beautiful art and this beautiful book by Titan Comics. So, uh... If you have any ideas what you want to see next, let me know. I mean, I'm probably going to keep going through all of Drier's work. I might even do another video on it. Um, after that, I think I'm reading some, like, Marvel or Cape stuff. I'm not really sure. We'll see where it goes. But uh, for now, just take it easy, guys. Thanks.